In this session, I am going to talk about neuromuscular blocking drug or muscle relaxants in detail. They are either benzyl isoquinolines or amino steroids. They are classified into two types that is depolarizing muscle relaxants and non-depolarizing muscle relaxants. Mostly to judge the action of muscle relaxant, it is judged on adductor pollicis muscle by stimulation of ulnar nerve. This is used to assess whether the action of muscle relaxant is complete or incomplete. Now basically to understand what muscle relaxant do. Muscle relaxant whether depolarizing or non-depolarizing muscle relaxant, they relaxes practically all the muscles of the body. In a sense, all the muscles of the body loses its tone, power and reflexes. Thus, the whole body is relaxed but the most important characteristic of all neuromuscular blocking drug or muscle relaxant is they never cross blood brain barrier. Hence, practically there is no neurological effects of muscle relaxants. Now, what are the pharmacokinetics? They are highly ionized water soluble compounds. So, they do not cross blood brain barrier. Hence, they do not have any neurological effect. They are very loosely bound to plasma proteins. That's why they are very rapidly excreted. Some of them are very rapidly excreted from the body. Just as, see, as you can see on your sc screen, rate of disappearance is characterized by rapid initial decline and then gradual decline from the body. Enhancement of block or enhancement of muscle relaxant occurs whenever these drugs are used concomitantly with volatile anesthetics. And how does muscle relaxation take place or what is the sequence in which muscle relaxation takes place? It occurs in following sequence. First, muscle to be affected by muscle relaxant are muscles of eyes. They are followed by digits before the trunk, then abdomen, finally the intercostals and then the diaphragm. Recovery from muscle relaxant takes place exactly in the reverse order. Now to classify muscle relaxants, they are classified as I said before into depolarizing muscle relaxant and non-depolarizing muscle relaxant. Succinylcholine is the only drug which is used right now which facilitates tracheal intubation can be categorized as depolarizing muscle relaxant. Non-depolarizing muscle relaxants are again grouped into three that is long acting, intermediate acting and short acting. Long acting, examples of long acting, non-depolarizing muscle relaxants are pancuronium, doxacuronium, pipecuronium, whereas intermediate acting, atracurium, cisatracurium, vacuronium, and rocuronium. Short acting or ultra short acting is mivacurium. Talking about first depolarizing muscle relaxant or scoline, let us talk in detail about scoline. Succinyl scoline is only clinically used depolarizing muscle relaxant. It has got rapid onset of action that is 30 to 60 seconds and short duration of action that is 3 to 5 minutes. It is useful drug to facilitate tracheal intubation. Mechanism of action, it acts by two ways. There is phase 1 block and phase 2 block. In phase 1 block, it attaches to the alpha subunits of nicotinic receptors thus mimicking action of acetylcholine. That is, it acts as competitive antagonist to acetylcholine. Once the drug attaches to the nicotinic receptor, it re depolarizes the receptors, thus making acetylcholine unable to bind to the receptor and hence action of acetylcholine is decreased. Hydrolysis of scoline is very slow as compared to that of acetylcholine, thus producing sustained depolarization. Also, after attaching itself to the nicotinic receptors, there is release of potassium from the channels, thus causing hyperkalemia. Phase 2 block, this is second type of block which occurs because of uh, succinylcholine. In this block, whenever receptors are desensitized, succinylcholine again binds to the same receptors causing ion channel blockade and entrance into the skeletal muscles. Now, I will talk in detail about characteristics of phase 1 block and characteristics of phase 2 block. As I said before, phase 1 block is competitive antagonist of acetylcholine. What are the characteristics of phase 1 block? There is decreased contraction in response to single twitch. There is decrease in amplitude but sustained response to continuous stimulation. Top ratio is more than 0.7. There is absent post tetanic facilitation and augmentation of block by anticholinesterase drug. This is very important. You please take, take note of this. There will be always augmentation of block 
if patient is under the influence of phase 1 block of succinylcholine and if you happen to administer anticholinesterase drug to this patient there will be augmentation of block rather than recovery from skeletal muscle relaxation this is very important from a ex examination point of view so you should always keep in mind whenever patient is being administered succinylcholine you should allow the patient to get out of it since it is a depolarizing muscle relaxant it does not require any anticholinesterase drug but if before the patient comes out of scholine if you give anticholinesterase drug you land up enhancing the block rather than reducing it so characteristic I'll re characteristics of phase 1 block, I'll repeat it once again for you. There is decrease in contraction in response to single twitch. Top ratio is less than 0.7. Decrease amplitude but sustained response to continuous stimulation and augmentation of block by anticholinesterase drug. Now talking about characteristics of phase 2 block, there is decreased twitch response to single stimulus. This is the difference. There will be decrease in twitch response to single stimulus and unsustained response to continuous stimulation. This is difference between phase 2 block and phase 1 block. In phase 2 block, there will be unsustained response to continuous stimulation. Top ratio in this case will be more than 0.7 whereas it is less than 0.7 in case of phase 1 block. post tetanic potentiation occurs and antagonism occurs in phase 2 block by anticholinesterase drug. Whereas in phase 1 block, if we give anticholinesterase drug, there will be augmentation of block. In phase 2 block, the block will be antagonized if you administer anticholinesterase drug. Duration of action of succinylcholine depends on following factors. First, plasma cholinesterase activity and second, presence of atypical cholinesterase. If plasma cholinesterase activity is decreased, the duration of action of scholine will increase. And if plasma cholinesterase activity increase, the duration of action will decrease. This is because scholine is metabolized by plasma cholinesterase. This is an exam question from exam point of view. Plasma cholinesterase uh, metabolizes scholine. Scholine is metabolized by plasma cholinesterase at the action site. Hence, it is called depolarizing muscle relaxant. It does not require any other anticholinesterase administered peripherally to depolarize or for its action to be reversed. Then the second uh, point by which duration of action is determined is presence of atypical cholinesterase. If at the site of action there is presence of any atypical cholinesterase, the, the duration of action of succinylcholine will obviously be prolonged. What are the side effects of succinylcholine? The first and major side effects of succinylcholine is hyperkalemia. As I explained before, during phase 1 block there is opening of channels as, as a result of which Potassium is uh, potassium manages to come outside the channels and hence potassium is freely available in the intravascular space leading to hyperkalemia. The second side effects which is most common is myoglobinuria. There will be raised intracranial pressure whenever succinylcholine is added. Hence it, it should be used very cautiously in neurological patients even though it is the only drug used to facilitate intub intubation. Raised IOP is also one of the major drawbacks that is raised in intraocular pressure hence scholine is mostly contraindicated in all probably all ophthalmic surgeries surgeries involving retina uh, where intubation and long duration of surgery is required in some cases of ophthal like retinal detachment and others but in these cases succinylcholine is contraindicated because it raises intraocular pressure cardiac dysarrhythmias it one of it is one of the drawbacks or side effects of scholine there will be sustained skeletal muscle contraction. It is one of the drawbacks and which can be seen in malignant hyperthermia as I have already discussed in one other another module. After giving scholine, if there is skeletal muscle contraction or sustained skeletal muscle rigidity, this shows this is a sign that patient is suffering from malignant hyperthermia. So summing up again the side effects, the major side effect is hyperkalemia, myoglobinuria, raised intraocular pressure, raised intracranial pressure, cardiac arrhythmias and sustained skeletal muscle contraction in some cases. So this sums up depolarizing muscle relaxant that is scholine. I have talked in detail about scholine, mechanism of action, phase 1 block, phase 2 block, characteristics of phase 1 block, characteristics of phase 2 block, uses and dosage and duration of action. Now let's come back to non-depolarizing muscle relaxant. So when I have talked about types of anesthesia, when I discussed in detail with you 
regarding general anesthesia with controlled respiration the sequence of during giving general anesthesia first thing you do is pre oxygenate the patient after using induction agent with the help of depolarizing muscle relaxant like scoline you intubate the patient and after 3 to 5 minutes when patient comes out of scoline it is the time when you give this non depolarizing muscle relaxant there are three types as i already discussed before long acting intermediate acting and short acting the long acting muscle relaxants are pancuronium doxacuronium and picuronium whereas intermediate acting are atracuronium rocuronium vecuronium and cisatracuronium and short acting is mivacuronium each of them differs from each other i will talk in detail about each one of them first in general how non depolarizing muscle relaxant act they act with post junctional receptor membranes without causing activation of ion receptor channel at high doses they act by blocking ion receptor channels total block occurs only when 80 to 90% of channels are blocked thus confirming wide margin of safety again talking about mechanism of action they act with post junctional receptor that is the same post junctional nicotinic receptors without causing ac activation of ion receptor channels at high doses they act by blocking the channels blocking ion receptor channels total block occurs only when 80 to 90% of channels are blocked thus there is wide margin of safety what are the characteristic of these types of block there will be decreased twitch response in single stimulation unsustained response or fade with continuous stimulation tof ratio is more than 0.7 there will be post tetanic potentiation or potentiation of other non depolarizing muscle relaxant and antagonism occur by anticholinesterase drug so if you look at these characteristics these characteristics are same as those of phase 2 block caused by succinyl scoline they are exactly the same as that of phase 2 block of succinyl scoline now systemic effects i have grouped them in a chart where you can it is it will be very easy for you to uh, compare effects of all the muscle relaxant together this is very important from exam point of view because in exam sometimes you may be asked to compare scoline with pancuronium pancuronium or scoline with vecuronium so this type of uh, chart will be very useful to you now i am going to talk about all the muscle relaxant i have taken this muscle relaxants in y axis and i am going to talk about histamine release cardiac receptor stimulation and cardiac nicotinic receptor stimulation so systemic effects first let's talk about scoline there will be modest histamine release from the body modest stimulation of cardiac muscarinic receptors and moderate stimulation of cardiac nicotinic receptors so in case of scoline there will be moderate stimulation of both cardiac muscarinic and cardiac nicotinic receptors and modest histamine release in case of pavlon there will be practically no histamine release or no stimulation of cardiac nicotinic receptors and moderate block of cardiac muscarinic receptors doxacuronium pipecuronium has practically no action on all, all three of them whereas in case of atracuronium there will be modest histamine release similarly for vecuronium cisatracuronium rocuronium there will be practically no histamine release and no cardiac muscarinic or nicotinic receptors so summing up this chart basically scoline causes moderate stimulation of cardiac muscarinic and nicotinic receptors and modest histamine release in case of long acting drug only pancuronium is the only drug which acts on cardiac muscarinic receptors now talking about systemic effects skeletal muscle weakness is a major drawback while using any of the muscle relaxant because long duration of muscle relaxant or in prolonged recovery may lead to skeletal muscle weakness whenever the patient comes out of a long duration of surgery say 6 to 8 hours and patient is already anesthetized and already under influence of skeletal muscle relaxant for more than 6 to 8 hours whenever patient comes out there is no tone power and reflexion and patient experiences myalgia for next 3 to 4 days so this is a common systemic effect of muscle relaxant drug interaction volatile anesthetics i already mentioned enhance the duration and magnitude of block that is enflurane isoflurane desflurane sevoflurane halothen and nitrous oxide in the order which i just mentioned they enhance the duration of block when used concomitantly with skeletal muscle relaxants like pancuronium or vecuronium antibiotics like aminoglycosides they also have they also enhance the duration of block 
Local anesthetics in small doses may enhance the duration of block while large doses can block neuromuscular transmission. Dysarrhythmic drugs like IV xylocaine augments the pre-existing block and diuretics large doses of Lasix antagonizes the block whereas chronic hypokalemia decreased dose requirement of diuretics. So summing up again the systemic effects as I mentioned Again, volatile anesthetics and antibiotics like aminoglycoside enhance the duration of block. The sequence in which or the order in which volatile anesthetic enhance the duration goes like enflurane, isoflurane, desflurane, sevoflurane, halothane and nitrous. In this order or in this sequence, duration of block is enhanced whenever these drugs are used concomitantly with uh, skeletal muscle relaxants or pancuronium or vacuronium. Local anesthetics, in case of local anesthetics, small doses of local anesthetics increase the duration of block whereas if large doses of local anesthetics are used concomitantly with skeletal muscle, large doses of local anesthetics by itself cause nerve blockage and hence decrease the, they can block the neuromuscular transmission by themselves. Dysarrhythmic drugs, IV xylocaine augments the block whereas diuretics like Lasix can antagonize the block. Minerals like magnesium, lithium, they can enhance the block and phenytoin sodium which is an anticonvulsant has caused resistance to neuromuscular blocking agents. So these are the systemic effects with effects of some of the agents like diuretics, magnesium, lithium, phenytoin sodium. Hypothermia, if patient is undergoing long duration of uh, surgery say 6 to 8 hours for uh, neurological operations or cardiac operations, hypothermia is a major concern because if patient is suffering from hypothermia, the duration of action of muscle relaxant will obviously be increased. So whenever after giving, after completion of long duration of surgery patient is, uh, we are unable to awaken the patient, first thing that, that should come to mind is hypothermia, you should increase the core body temperature and whenever core body temperature increases then and then only patient comes out or awakens out of anesthesia. Other effects like potassium hypokalemia decreases the effects of non depolarizing agents, whereas hyperkalemia increases the effects of non depolarizing agents. Thermal in injury, if at all patient is suffering from any thermal injury, it, it raises the action of muscle relaxants. Now, I have talked in general about all the action systemic effects of muscle relaxants, non depolarizing muscle relaxants in general. Now, I am going to talk in detail about each one of them. Talking first about pancuronium which is long acting muscle relaxant. Pancuronium is bisquaternary aminosteroid non depolarizing muscle relaxant. Again pancuronium is bisquaternary aminosteroid non depolarizing muscle relaxant. ED95 is 70 microgram per kg. Duration of action is around 60 to 90 minutes and dose is 0 0.08 milligram per kg. Talking once again, pancuronium is bisquaternary aminosteroid non depolarizing muscle relaxant. ED95 is 70 microgram per kg. Duration of action is 60 to 90 minutes and dose is 0 0.08 milligram per kg. This is very important from exam point of view because a lot of questions have been asked regarding dose of pancuronium and ED95 of pancuronium. Now clearance, 80% of pancuronium is eliminated unchanged in urine. 10 to 40 percent undergoes hepatic deacetylation in liver forming 3 desacetyl pancuronium and 17 desacetyl pancuronium. Talking once again about clearance, 80 percent of pancuronium is eliminated unchanged in urine. 10 to 40 percent undergoes hepatic clearance to form 3 desacetyl pancuronium and 17 desacetyl pancuronium. Systemic effects. Cardiovascular system, there is modest increase in heart rate, blood pressure and cardiac output when pancuronium use. But this increase is very modest. Respiratory system, respiratory alkalosis en enhances the pancuronium blockade and antagonizes the effects of neostigmine. Hence, you should be very careful when patient is suffering from metabolic alkalosis or respiratory alkalosis. You should treat the same as quickly as possible because if you don't treat the same, the effects or duration of block of pancuronium will automatically be enhanced. Hepatic system, liver diseases increases the volume of distribution and prolong the blockade. So talking about pancuronium once again, I will just mention it is a bisquaternary aminosteroid non-depolarizing muscle relaxant. ED95 is 70 microgram per kg. 
duration is 60 to 90 minutes and dose is around 0.08 mg per kg. 80% of it is cleared unchanged in urine, 10 to 40% undergoes hepatic metabolism to 3 desacetyl pancuronium and 17 desacetyl pancuronium. CVS uh, side effects or systemic effects in cardiovascular system there is modest increase in heart rate, blood pressure and cardiac output. In respiratory system, respiratory alkalosis with, will enhance the pancuronium effect and antagonize the effect of neostigmine. In cases of in hepatic system, liver disease increase the volume of distribution and prolong its blockage. The next muscle relaxant, long acting depolarizing muscle relaxant is doxaculinium. It is a benzyl isoquinolium non depolarizing muscle relaxant. ED95 is around 30 microgram per kg per minute. Onset of duration of action is 4 to 6 minutes. Duration is around 60 to 90 minutes. Volatile anesthetic re re reduce the requirement by 20 to 40 percent. That is, volatile anesthetic when used concomitantly with any of the non depolarizing muscle relaxant can enhance the duration of action. Hence, the volume or the dose of uh, uh, non depolarizing muscle relaxant is obviously reduced when volatile anesthetic is concomitantly used with the help with uh, non depolarizing muscle relaxant. No cardiovascular changes happen due to doxacurium as there is no histamine release in case of doxacurium. Talking once again, I have just mentioned it. This is not used clinically. This is long acting non depolarizing muscle relaxant. This is benzyl isoquinolium non depolarizing muscle relaxant. ED95 is around 30 microgram per kg. Onset of action is 4 to 6 minutes and duration of action is 40 to 60 minutes. Volatile anesthetics reduce the requirement and there is no there are no cardiovascular side effects. The next non depolarizing muscle relaxant is pipecuronium. It is bisquaternary amino steroid non depolarizing muscle relaxant. ED95 is around 50 to 60 microgram per kg per minute. Please keep a note on ED95 of each and every dose because ED95 have been asked in uh, recent, uh, recent examinations ED95 and onset of duration of action. In case of pipecuronium, coming back to it, onset of action is around 3 to 5 minutes and blockade is for 6 to 90 minutes. Potency increased and duration is shortened in infant depending on renal clearance. There are no CVS effects as there is no histamine release in case of pipecuronium. Summing up again, it is a bisquaternary amino steroid, non depolarizing muscle relaxant. ED95 is around 50 to 60 microgram per kg per minute. Onset of action is 3 to 5 minutes and duration of action is 60 to 90 minutes. Potency increases and duration is shortened in infant depending on the renal clearance and there is no cardiovascular effects of pipecuronium. These are some of the long acting uh, non depolarizing uh, agents which we use. In the next session, I will talk about intermediate acting non depolarizing muscle relaxants like atracuronium, vecuronium and others. And in the last session, I'll finish it up, sum up, sum it up with you. The whole action of non-depolarizing and depolarizing muscle relaxant and what is its clinical use in daily clinical practice. Thank you very much.